Ooo arkadakine full engel yaptım. Bir tercih değil mi? On August 27, 2020, radar systems of the Turkish Air Force detected six F-16 aircraft departing from Crete Island heading towards southern Cyprus. The Hellenic Air Force's F-16 aircraft were prevented by the Turkish Air Force in the southwest of the island of Cyprus in order to visually identify the military traffic approaching the region, declared NAVTAX, and to remove them from the region. The aircraft were identified as belonging to Greece and removed from the region. Today we're going to take a look at the HUD video released by the Turkish Ministry of Defense. What's up, everybody? It's Monday. I'm Mover C.W. Lemoyne, uh, author of the Spectre series. If you're looking for aviation, military, espionage books to check out, uh, Spectre series uh, is related to that. It's an uh, F-16 pilot. I flew F-16s if you're new to the channel, also F-18s. Uh, and today we're going to take a look at the video released on uh, Thursday. Well, actually, it was released Friday. It happened on Thursday of uh, six Hellenic Vipers um that were intercepted by turkish vipers now this came up last time i did one of these videos and people get pretty pedantic about my use of the word viper any f-16 pilot or maintainer or anybody who's ever been around the f-16 calls it the viper there's no differentiation between a block 40 block 50 they're all vipers uh, i know in later blocks uh, they have more officially been called the viper but the Viper has been a nickname since the 70s uh, in Battlestar Galactica. Uh, the pilots started calling it that, and that's just what we've called it. So my whole career, I've called it the Viper, no matter what block it is. And so today I'm going to talk about it. And when I say Viper, I'm not specifically referring to a block. I'm just saying F-16. So let's take a look at the video. I had a uh, viewer actually send me the, um, the video on his YouTube channel where he actually did closed captioning. So here we go. Locked. Locked. We'll go through it one time, real, real, uh, real time, and then uh, I'll break it down. He's breathing. I'm glad we had that translation. And a gun was here. Was weapons engagement zone. He's, he's, he's in a dogfight mode. We'll talk about what the symbology means here in a second. That's a pretty stable gunshot. Bingo. At 7,000 feet. Too long, too short. Drop the F-16. This time, block 53 All right. So that's the real time. Let's break it down. Um, I'll turn the audio down because we don't need it anymore. Uh, or at least lower. Uh, all right. So what are we looking at here? Um, for those of you unfamiliar with the F-16 HUD, that's 260 knots calibrated airspeed. Um, so that is imperial. I know we always get into this, whether it's metric or imperial, that's an imperial measurement, calibrated airspeed. 
Uh, this is his bullseye position. So whatever he set up uh, as the bullseye, so he's uh, bearing 296 for 46 miles from whatever. I mean, maybe it's their home base. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. Um, this is the ranging. So the radar F, uh, 1.6 miles, nautical miles. Uh, and that's his altitude. This is, he's in a dogfight mode, air to air symbology, and that's his G forces. So, um, that's something to note right off the bat. He's in a dogfight mode. Uh, he's in SIM. So what does SIM mean? SIM means that uh, weapons employment is simulated. Anything, he presses the pickle button, the trigger, anything like that, nothing's actually going to come off the aircraft, uh, which tells me this is, immediately that this is not, uh, they're not intending to go out and shoot down, so otherwise the master arm would be hot. This is more of what we saw in the last video where it's kind of a, um, it's an intercept, but they're not intending to start a war. This is not going to kick off any kind of, um, you know, shooting because he's in sim. He's, he's not intending to do that, which is a, with live weapons, presumably on the aircraft. We obviously can't see what the Turkish jet configuration is. Um, you know, sim is an okay place to be off is a little bit better, but sim gives you all the symbology and stuff. So sim's a good place to be. And, uh, I don't see him ever actually pull the trigger or hit the pickle button. So that's a good thing too. And we'll talk about, uh, the aim nine here. So right now, uh, he's a mile and a half away. He's basically in lead. Uh, you can see the cross up here. Um, the boresight cross, so that's boresight of the aircraft. So his nose is out front. Um, this is the, the computed gun sight. The diamond is the AIM-9, which is tracking the aircraft because of the radar lock. Um, you can hear the growl. That means it, it knows there's something there, but it, he hasn't, it's called uncaged. So you never get a solid tone, which means he doesn't intend to actually shoot the AIM-9, uh, at any time. You just hear that constant growl the whole time throughout the video. All right, so this actually cuts to another part. So we went from one point something miles to th right inside of a, or right outside of 3,000 feet. He's well in lead now. Um, the other aircraft's in lead. I, he says he's in six miles. I got him locked. That might be the other, his wingman or his flight lead or something, because this guy is inside of 2,000 feet now. So he goes to lag. Um, and then we get, now it's something else. So this is a lot of different separate clips. I don't know if they gave us video clips of all six aircraft or what, but this is not one solid engagement because you can see now uh, we went from 26,000 feet down to 11,000 feet. So uh, these are obviously separate engagements. So it's not quite as complete as what the uh, Hellenic Air Force did in their video where it was one continuous engagement. I don't know what the beeper is. Um, you got to understand F-16 blocks are different between each block and also between countries. So this is not 100% what I'm used to flying. I don't know. I've never heard a beeper on any of the F-16s I flew. So I don't know how they have that set up. Uh, it's obviously not a G-rate beeper because he's only pulling a G and a half. So I don't know. But what you'll see here too is this little circle uh, predicts where the bullets are. So if you put him in between the plus and a minus, uh, and put that little circle there, that's pretty much a gun's track. So that's what he's looking to do. So right there, um, you can see that the, the, the other Viper or the, uh, the Greek Viper is, I mean, he's not maneuvering a whole lot. He's just in this, uh, constant turn. Uh, but you can see the configuration. So it looks like he's got conformal tanks and it looks like he also has two 370 gallon drop tanks, which again, we talked about this the last time. Um, were they to feel like this was a real engagement, they'd have punched off those tanks and they'd actually be fighting. So again, same as last time, this is more of a, an intercept with a little bit of maneuvering and then a knock it off and then they go back home. Uh, so right there, he could get a, I mean, if, if they were really fighting, this would be a, a really good fleeting gunshot. Um, not really stable, but a good gunshot. Way in lead. So, uh, 
a lot of plan for him. He's got a hundred knots closure and let's see what happens here. I'm tracking him. Well, you're not, I mean, you're, you're tracking him, but that's not a guns track because your pipper's nowhere near him right now, but it will be right there. That is the pipper on the canopy. That is a valid guns track. Uh, we'd have to count frames, but you know, if he pulls the trigger right now and the, the bullets at target range, the batter would show up and it would show that, yeah, it's a, it's a gun good track, but he doesn't pull the trigger, which I think is a really good thing. But as far as guns track goes, I mean, he's at a thousand feet, so he's a little bit close. Uh, he's got zero, uh, V sub C he's only pulling three and a half G's and they're down at eight, eight and a half, uh, or 8,500 feet. Um, but again, I think this guy's just doing a solid turn. Like, I, I don't think he's, I don't, I don't think they're maneuvering in relation to each other, just like the other one. Um, there's not much of a, a fight here. So he says he's in firing position, which is true. I mean, that's a stable gun track, but you know, I mean, they're, they're not really dog fighting. So bingo. just like the other one. Bingo. Okay. Bingo. I've seen this mentioned in the media and they're like, well, how come he doesn't have enough fuel? So the bingo bug is actually configurable on the upfront control panel and it's just whatever you type in. So, I mean, it could be Joker fuel, which is uh, uh, cease maneuvering. Um, there's a difference between Joker and bingo. Joker is just to cease maneuvering for that phase of flight to let you know you have a buffer before bingo and bingo is enough fuel to RTB. So um, just getting a fuel warning doesn't tell me a whole lot because I don't know what they had. To, I mean, this could be, hey, this is Joker or this is a pre-planned fuel state to go to the tanker or before I, I can't use afterburner anymore or something else. It doesn't necessarily mean that they were out of fuel and they had to go RTB already. But I mean, he's obviously in an offensive position and you can see really well here that that those are conformal fuel tanks. And is obviously in a very offensive position, but again, they're at 6,000 feet, 230 knots and two and a half Gs. So, um, and you don't see, usually you'd see vapes off the, um, the other aircraft if it was kind of G'd up and low, low speed, high energy or low speed, low energy state where it's actually trying to maneuver. He just looks like he's in a solid 3G turn at 250 knots, 200 knots. So that looked like a jank. I can't tell because of the, the, the way it works, but that almost looked like he did a tuck under jank. So that is a little different and they're a little low to be doing this too. Typically, Especially over water, we stop fighting at 5,000 feet. Obviously, this is real world, so there's no training rules or anything, but uh, they're a little bit low to be doing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, now he's now he's turning away. And at this point, there are 26,000 feet, 400 knots. This dude's bugging out. Um, so 50 knots V sub C, so that dude's probably doing 370. Um, so I think this is when they're they're going away. Um, you know, when they've turned him away back to where they came from. Yeah. So they're, they're basically hey, in the result of the VID too long. I don't know what too long, too short means, but F-16s with drop tanks. And this is where he's gotten closer. He's in five, 500 feet and he's just doing a air defense intercept. We do them all the time. I mean, you see it in the news all the time with, with us doing this with the Russians. Yeah, and at th th this point, he's just hanging out in kind of a trail fighting wing position or whatever. So there has been some dispute about whether this video is actually even real, uh, especially on Twitter and some of uh, Greek media. Obviously, there's a lot of turmoil between these two countries, and anytime anything like this comes out, both sides are saying that the other side's lying or it's not real or whatever. So one site pointed out that um, it's not real because it's in sim. And I talked about that in the breakdown, but, uh, just to clarify, it's a three position switch, master arm switch. Uh, if you go master arm on, uh, off or sim, sim gives you the ability to simulate weapons employment, um, on the side of whether it's real or fake. Well, um, if you're doing a real air defense scramble, I can't see a reason why 
you would be in sim unless you absolutely knew that the people that you were intercepting were friendlies or not hostile. So in that case, could go either way. Um, you know, if, if it were, if they were intercepting for uh, the purpose of actually fighting them, then you wouldn't be in sim. But if they were intercepting knowing that there's no chance that they were gonna fight or that there's no chance that they were going to uh, actually turn what, because they're defensive, uh, the Greek F-16s are defensive through this, and the Turkish F-16s are offensive. But if it turns around, you know, uh, and you realize you do need to shoot, you know, you're going to have to under G go and flip that up to arm and remember to do that. So I'm not sure. The only way it would stay in sim is if you absolutely 100% knew that uh, you weren't going to employ, or in the favor of the argument that it's not a real video, uh, is that. You know, we use sim and training when we're when we're simulating with each other um, and doing basic fighter maneuvers, ACM, any of that other stuff. We always leave it in sim because we know that's how we evaluate rounds. On the flip side of that argument, people saying, "Well, because it's in sim, that means it's fake." Well, um, they never pulled the trigger, so you get a witness cue if you hit the pickle button. Uh, you pull the trigger, you're gonna hit the batter. So if it's a training video of them fighting themselves. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense either because, well, I mean, where's the them actually training to employ? Now, they could have edited that part out. I don't know, but it's really hard to say. The other argument was the fuel thing. I talked about that. Uh, it's just a bingo bug. Doesn't mean anything at all. So uh, you can't really get anything out of that. Uh, and somebody also said the altitude warning. That's also something you can plug in. Uh, it's called the ALO. Uh, and it's the altitude uh, alerting system. That's just what you type in. So I think they had it at 10,000 feet. That's why it happened. I can't say whether it's real or fake just based on people have posted pictures and said, well, you know, you can tell the multicolors and the colors of the F-16. I looked, I really did. I, I tried to blow up the still images from when they were inside of 2,000 feet, inside of 1,000 feet and stuff. I can't tell. HUD footage is not high quality. It's not. 1080p, I mean, at best, it may be 480p. I think it's actually less than that. So, uh, or the DVRs might be 480, but you can't tell. So I, I don't know how you tell. I looked at one image where you can see the, uh, the roundel on the left wing and it, in some ways you look at it, it looks blue. In some ways you look at it, it looks red. I can't tell. I mean, I'm just not, I don't have the, the, the video is not high quality enough to be able to tell markings and color patterns and stuff like that. And with, with the sun angle and the shadows and stuff, I don't think there really is a, a good way to tell just by looking at the markings, whether they're Turkish emblems or Turkish paint schemes or uh, Hellenic uh, F-16s. The only thing I can tell is that it is conform, it is an F-16 with conformal fuel tanks. That's really all I can get out of it. Again, that's not really, I'm here just to break down the video. I, I just, I can't say whether it's real or fake. There's just not enough information. Um, what I can say is that this video is obviously spliced. So it's not one continuous, uh, dog fighting scene. Like we saw the first time I did this, uh, you know, it's, it's, it looks like multiple sets of multiple different things. Uh, cause you see altitude changes, you see the bullseye change in the bottom left corner. Uh, you see a bunch of different things. So it's, it's very spliced together, which could be an argument for it being fake, or it could be an argument of operational security. And the Turks are just trying to protect their tactics and, and methods. It does make sense. Um, in the sense that they're just in a turn. They're not really fighting each other. It doesn't look like either side is being very aggressive towards each other. Now, granted, nose on, you know, if you're the, the Greeks, you would probably react to that. If it's a situation where both sides realize that they're not going to do anything because they don't want to kick off a war, then yeah, you might be uh, on the Greek side. You might be very predictable. You might not want to show any kind of aggression or anything like that as you turn around and go home. And on the Turkish side, yeah, you get your guns track or whatever for bragging rights, but you're not going to push it beyond that. There's no flares observed. If, it were, if this were real, you would see flares. You would see uh, the 370 gallon tanks being punched off. You would see more aggressive maneuvering. This is not a real dogfight. This is more of an intercept uh, with 
the HUD video of getting some gun frames as they're maneuvering around versus an actual fight. I don't know why they went all the way down to 4,000 feet. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but again, there's no continuity between clips, so it's very hard to tell. What does make sense is the progression, uh, how they designed it from turning to basically turning and going home. I know some people said that the audio doesn't match either. They're like at the one minute mark, there's uh, you can hear Greek pilots. It could be Greek pilots. You could be hearing them on guard, which is 243 uh, that they could be transmitting and, and hearing that. I don't know. Typically for an intercept, everybody would be speaking English. They would all be talking to each other. I, I don't understand the, the different languages and stuff that they're using here. So with that said, I just don't know. Uh, there's some continuity issues with it, but it could very well be real. And if it is real, it's it's a very benign event um you know it's it's a gun's track uh but there was never any intent to fire because the thing's in sim the whole time and he never even uncaged his aim nine so uh, not that the other pilot would know but if i were thinking that i were going to go and shoot somebody i'd be master arm on that aim nine would be uncaged and you'd be you'd hear a solid tone ready to fire uh at any time so it's really hard to tell whether this is real or anything like that but it is part of an ongoing uh, conflict between the Greeks and the Turks. But that's as far as I want to go into the politics of it, because all I'm here for is just to talk about the flying and the dogfighting stuff. So I tried to break down just the F-16 related stuff of what's going on and not getting into the geopolitical stuff, which I try to avoid. And oh, last time there were some issues where I read the article and people were mad because I said disputed islands. Well, that's just what the article said. I, I don't want to get into the, the geopolitics of it because that's not my purview and that's not you know i like to stay within my lane and, and you know i'm just analyzing what i see from having flown these jets before anyway coming up soon on the channel uh the announcement for the folds of honor fight for honor 2020 will be coming up i'll give you the dates and how do you can register and some pretty big news on that uh, don't forget next week i'm going to be interviewing uh heron systems who developed the ai falco that fought uh, banger in the alpha dogfight trials that uh, the AI beat the F-16 human fighter pilot, uh, F-16 v F-16. So that'll be cool to talk to him. Get your questions ready because it'll be a live event um, and really, really excited to have them on the channel. We got a big announcement from them as well. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys have a great week. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Excuse me. Oh, no. Fire with the doors off. All fox Don't be a douche. Rule number one. Make them tell you now.